God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Excuse me. Father in heaven, thank you for showing up. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your light that shines in the deepest stink of our hearts. God, we don't know the depths of our hearts and where we're hiding. Lord, if you were to reveal everything about us now, we would be consumed. But God, being rich in mercy, Lord, you make it so that we are not consumed. You make it so that we are whole. To carry out your good will. Help us, O oh Lord. Open the words that you want to speak now to every heart and to everybody who's watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, hey, Nana. You need to always stay there. All right. Guys, I was, uh, so we have dear friend, uh, praise the Lord for more those who want him, uh, John 6, we spent some time in John 6, but uh, guys want to go to John 6 and then uh, I'll, I'll share uh, during worship, uh, it just, it was very powerful. I was really concerned about this morning, about, uh, about the whole idea of vaccine cards and all that, and borders being shut down, specifically to Canada and, and whatnot. And anxiety was coming in. And I was like, Lord, is this going to happen? And I was like, during worship, it was like, where is your faith? Now, I'm not going to get into the whole political situation. Wrong venue for that. This is this, it's not it. No. Who do we serve? God. Jesus Christ, who is above We serve the God of miracles. I love the Disney uh, Three Little Pigs. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? The big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the COVID-19? The COVID-19? <laughs> or vaccine card? Or how about bad economy? Did not Jesus say, if you say to this mountain, or let's call it a spear. Let's call it an influence. Get up and be tossed into the sea. He wasn't, he could be talking about a physical mountain. But Jesus said, says, I'm above. I deal with heavenly things. He is Lord over all. When the heavenly things are made right, the earthly things should sure follow. Many missionaries of old, saints of old, have said, the things of earth literally count for nothing. But it's that which is eternal, is spiritual and unseen. Without faith, people like Hudson Taylor, Smith Wigglesworth, George Mueller, David Wilkerson, some of these holiness preachers, Samuel Logan Brangle, Oswald Chambers, Andrew Murray. It said, C.T. Studd, that which will be done on earth will pass, but that which is done for Christ will last. So, this this flesh has got nothing for us. This is we're on a Titanic, and um, we need to stand against these different hindrances. Jesus says. This is, in the army, there's general orders, like general order, first general order. 
I will guard my post and only quit my post until I'm properly relieved. Okay, I'm not going to leave my post. That post for us as believers, go to all the world, preach the gospel, the good news to all creation. What's that? That the sons of God have come. That Christ Jesus, God in flesh, can dwell in us. That is what the gospel is about. The mystery of God is Christ in you. We can remit sin. We can forgive sin because Jesus is in us. Who can forgive sin but God alone? Well, if God's in you, you can forgive sin as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Okay? 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 5. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We ought to do as he did. Hindrances. Oh, you can't come into this land without this vaccine or card or money or whatever. I'm not even going to go into it. What about prayer? Lord, take me where you want me to go. Show me how to stand against it. And I'll do as you say. Stop trying to fight it. Do as he said. Get baptized with obedience and just walk. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about your life. What you'll eat or your body, what you'll wear. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That was free. John 6. Which sort of goes along with this. Verse 26. John 6, verse 26. Jesus answered, I assure you, you are looking for me. Let me paint the backdrop. Okay, they, they just got off a stormy boat, or a stormy lake, sea, sea of Galilee. Got off the boat onto the shore. They just had the feeding of the 5,000. They ran to go find him. He says, I assure you, you're looking for me. Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Why are you looking for today? Why is your heart drawn for now? He says, you don't want me. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, you want my benefits. Y'all know where I'm going with that. Do we not treat him as some sort of prostitute? Hey, here's my little prayer. Give me my Doritos. Here's my little prayer. Give me my blessing. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Go ahead and try that with your wife, your husband. Last time I checked, he wants all of it. He'll give you all of himself. In fact, he freely gives. He gives more than you're ready to receive. He says, don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life. I was a sexual ass. I was hungry for more. I wanted more. I wanted more. Never enough. I went deeper, harder, to the point I wanted to kill myself. I said, I can't do this anymore. And God said, just wait. And he showed up. I said, I don't want anything but you, Jesus. You got it all. Forget it. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name. I'll take your cross too. I want it. I don't care how bad it hurts. I know what you did for me. Daily, see what he did for you. Visualize a man on a cross. Didn't get offended. This isn't fair. God, no, didn't do that. Ah, they don't even know what they're doing. If only they saw what they could have. And who they can have. Not just what, but who. He says, work for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. He'll give you. Isaiah 55. Come, buy, and eat. Without money. Without price. Drink freely. Hi. Are you trying so hard? Just stop. Hey, say it. Because God the Father set a seal of approval on him. That means Jesus. So they ask him, what can we do to perform the works of God? And 
not, it ain't gonna happen. Even in your good times, I woke up cranky this morning. I said, Lord, why can't I pray this? And he said, what don't you want to do? I don't want to go back to bed. He said, that's what you need to do. And I threw a tantrum. I said, I don't want to. <sighs> Obedience for me, get back to bed and do what you're told. I woke up. I, I laid down when I finally submitted. Really pointed to my will wanting my own. When I finally submitted, I wept in repentance. He said, if you would just obey me, you would get what you need and what you long for. And I did. And I'm not saying don't get on the schedule. What I'm saying is obey. Submit. Let your heart always seek to do what? Go to verse 38. For I've come down from heaven... Not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. I'm going to skip back to verse 29. Jesus replied, this is the work of God. that You believe in the one he has sent. So, now we're going to go back. Sorry, I do a lot of jumping back. Uh, verse back to 38. This is the will of him who sent me. Isaiah, go to mom. This is the will of him who sent me. That I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise him up on the last day. For this is the will of my father, that everyone who sees his son and believes in him may have eternal life and I'll raise him up on that last day. Now, this may be a little scandalous for me to say it. I've been rejected before. When this is the challenge, when people see you, do they do they see John 6, 38 and threw on in you? Your will is not to do yours, but the one of him who sent you. Mark 16, go in to all creation, preach the gospel. Are you doing the will of him who sent you? Or are you doing your own stinking ideas? Are you doing your own stinking plans? Or, or are you one of those, I'm an undeserving servant, seeking to do the will of him who sent me? Are you like a beautiful bride seeking to do her husband's will because she loves him so much. Do they see the son in you and believe in him through you? Does Jesus peek through the windows of your soul? Let's call it your eyes. Do people see it on your face? Do people see it in your heart? Are you baptized with obedience? Is it there? If it's not, why not? These are questions you should be asking your Father in heaven. Lord, am I pleasing to you? <coughs> he should say, you're my child in whom I'm well pleased. But if you are doing, if you're not in that abiding, I'm sorry. Now abiding, let's face it, we have wonderful days and not so wonderful days. The abiding means Jesus is always there. What it doesn't mean is you are trying for it to be there. It's there. He is there. Why? Because God's word says so. Now, are people drawn to you? Look, look at verse 43. Jesus answered them, stop complaining among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I'll raise him up on the last day. I'm not saying they come to you Johnny or you know James or Janie oh yeah I love Janie I love pastor so and so no do they can they honestly say and let it be let these those who compare themselves by themselves are not wise okay 
Audit yourselves before the Lord. Work out your salvation for your trembling. This is what I'm saying. Lord, do people see you, Jesus Christ, in me? And if they don't, please get me out of your way so that nothing in me is creating a smoke screen to you. Amen. That's what that means. Are people drawn to you because of Jesus in you? Or are people drawn to you because you're charismatic? Yeah, oh yeah, the people were drawn to people. A lot of people. Adolf Hitler was one. John F. Kennedy was another. I'm not saying he was a bad person, but he's just a man. Or there are certain pastors that people are really drawn to. And people are drawn to the person. Yeah. Okay, I'm not naming names. That's not my job. Are you going to Jesus because of that person? That they are servants. I'm a servant. I'm nothing outside of him, his blood. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Mm -hmm. The death of Jesus opens the doorway and reconciles me. The life of Jesus saves me. Or, he says, well, let's go to verse 53. This is how you know that you're in Jesus. Okay? Again, these are very hard words. But that's what the Bible says. Okay? Verse 53. 52. Jesus, uh, at that, the Jews argued among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? He says, before, if anyone eats of this bread, he says, I'm the living bread. Jesus pointed to himself, I'm the living bread. They were thinking fleshly. Why? Because it's a fleshly concept. The spirit had not been given in mass. Joel 2. Okay? Last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That hasn't happened at that point until after Pentecost. Okay? So they could only think like it was a show, Family Matters. Who remembers Family Matters? It's Steve Urkel. Y'all remember that? He said, uh... Laura was uh, trying to set up a date with Steve, and, and I'm illustrating this to prove a point. She's, uh, she pulls him over and says, Steve, you know how there's, you know, I will never, ever, 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 ever go out with you. Steve's sort of thinking, let me get this straight. So, if we were on a desert island, stranded, and Laura says, I'm a strong swimmer. <laughs> And then Steve said, if we were the last two people on earth, and Laura says, mankind will end, with us, will end with us. So what are you trying to say? Okay, that's how they were. No matter how obvious illustrations, they just didn't get it. They didn't. There's a veil. 2 Corinthians 3.18. And woo! Jesus. Everything is lifted, set aside in Christ. The veil is lifted from a person's eyes in Christ. If Jesus is not the centerpiece of your table, I'm sorry, folks. You got a veil on your eyes and you're not going to get it. You will not get it. If Jesus is in the centerpiece and you're like, I don't like this, that's fine. You can, you can, you can go ahead and leave. I, I, nobody's keeping you here. Okay? Nobody's keeping you anywhere. But if you hear me want more, well, then that, that means, well, we, we just read it. No one comes to me until, unless the Father draws him to me. The Holy Spirit testifies to Jesus Christ. Okay? So he says this, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, verse 53, and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. Sorry. That means partake. That means join in. It means feast on the things he feasted on. It means the destruction of the flesh. It means the destruction of everything stinking comfortable. Get uncomfortable. <coughs> Get offended. Because now you can take that offense to the cross and say, Okay, Lord, that person's soul is more important than my offense. Guilty, I had an offense this morning. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Somebody made a well-intentioned comment, I had to repent because I got offended. 
get offended, and then repent. Let it come out, and then repent. Don't hide it. He who walks in light has fellowship with those in light. He who doesn't walks in darkness, and light has no fellowship in him. If they say they love God, and they say they have light in him, but they walk in darkness, they make God a liar. And the love of God is not in him, First John. Just read First John. Let it rip you apart. Amen. Okay. Just as the living Father, 57, sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. We talked about some time ago about Hebrews leave the elementary principles and feast on the meat. Guys, this is what it is. <coughs> Eating is communion. It's not about feeding your gut, no. See, because if that was the case, then we wouldn't die. I mean, if, 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 if godliness is all about how you eat, then we would be an overpopulated world with natural resources never running out. If, I mean, you follow what I'm saying? If all about godliness was dealing with foodstuffs, that means you could eat and recycle it, and we'd have 20, 30, 40, 50 billion people on this earth. And resources on this earth would never go. No. Jesus was pointing to eating was a gateway to the heart. What are the most intimate moments among a people group? If you reject their food, what are you rejecting? Those of you who've been around foreign cultures. Somebody can answer, if somebody can answer that. When you, yeah. say it again. You're rejecting them. You're rejecting them. You're rejecting their five letter word. Five letter word, center of your chest. Heart. You're rejecting their heart. Because they're trying to be nice and give you the food. That's right. It and is a gateway. Rejecting their food. That's right. It is a gateway to fellowship. It is a gateway to communion. It is a gateway to the heart. Jesus says, if you're feasting in me, you are walking in my steps and you do what? Have my... Say it one more time, man. Five little word. Heart. Heart. You have my heart. So he says, so this is the meat of the scripture, guys. It's fellowship with him. Take upon his trials and challenges. Colossians 1.24, fill up in me the sufferings of Christ. Whatever's lacking in the church, lacking in the body. We don't have a bankrupt country. We, I'm sorry, we have a bankrupt body. We have people that are not living in obedience. Guys, I, I'm the last one to say anything, but I do know the anguish when I shared at Lighthouse Revival Ministry. They must have thought I was nuts. Because I was baptized in such an anguish and I wept and sobbed and screamed. Just as quick as it came on, it left. Um, first door on the right passes one through. Yep. Um, and this is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your fathers ate and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. Therefore, when many of his disciples, and he spoke these things while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, in his hometown. He spoke it to the religious, churchgoers. Let's just call it what it is. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? It's hard to be inconvenienced. Little irritations. I don't want to have to change another, another stinky diaper. I just said my dessert. And now my kids say, can I have it? Fine, I don't have to have it. Yeah, sorry, that's cross. Guilty. Daddy, can you come play with me? No, I got stuff to do. Jesus, knowing in himself about that, his disciples were complaining about this, he asked them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before. Naked I came, naked I go, Job. Is that not how we go into the spiritual realm? Come out of our mother's womb and go into the ground. From dust I came and dust I go. What was Jesus saying? 
How about if you were to observe me die? That's what he said. The spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. That's what I said about the whole eating thing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some among you who don't believe. The religious, some among of you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who would not believe and the one who would betray him. He said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by the Father. From that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. Therefore, Jesus said to the twelve, you don't want to go away too, do you? But Simon Peter answered, Lord, who will we go to? You have the words of life. We've come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Go to verse chapter 7, 17. If anyone wants to do his, that means God's will, he will understand whether the teachings from God or if I am speaking of my own. Does the world hate you? Does the world see Jesus in you? Does the world like you? If they like you, if they like you, guys, I'm sorry, you, need to, you really need to tremble. I'm sorry, you really need to be afraid if the world likes you. Guys, I, I <coughs> beg the world does not like you. I beg that they're drawn to you because of Jesus, but they better not like you. Now, that's two different things. Liking, hey, let's come eat together. That's liking. Drawn to you, I need what you have. That's being drawn. I need what you have and I gotta go where you're going. That's being drawn. I like you means, hey, can we hang out? Be buddy buddy. Hey, let's go to the arcades. Let's go have a good time. I heard Paul Washer eat. Um, his wife wanted him to go and relax. Mandatory fun time in the army, as I said. Uh, so I think she bought him some golf clubs. I don't remember the story exactly. And he went with some pastors. They were having a golf outing. And uh, they go golfing. And he just, man, I read the scripture. And they, during one of the break times when they're uh, doing golf, I know nothing about golf. Don't ask me. And... Uh, um, and they do, um, yeah, shooting's my thing. You know, I like target shooting. Well, it's fun. Um, so uh, they, um, he said, yeah, I read something in the scripture. Jesus just really showed up. And he shared that the pastors told him, hey, we're trying to have fun. Leave that for Sunday. What? Does not the scripture say, in him we live and move and have our being? Does it not say we do all things to the glory of God? You mean you're going to have antichrist on the golf field? If God calls you to enjoy a golf game, enjoy it to his glory. He gave it to you. I'll never forget. Years ago, we went to Legoland in um, yeah. Ooh, Cypress Gardens area, Polk County, I forget, um, Winter Haven, that's what it was, in Florida. Somebody gave us tickets, I think we had five kids at the time. So we had seven tickets, they just handed it to us. And we're like, ah oh, man, okay, so we took it. It was a blessing. I mean, God doted on us. We... I, I, I have no words to express the sheer delight the Lord did to the point where Nathaniel got lost. Uh, he was found again by one of the staff and every kid got a little Lego figurine uh, for free. He's like, hey, please come back. You know, it was, it was wonderful. We were doted on at the pizza buffet there uh, uh, right outside town. It was such a wonderful time. But we didn't take it for ourselves. Somebody gave it to us. It was like the Lord saying, I'm blessing you. If you seek to do his will, and to just walk in him, he will give you those blessed times. When I got remarried, he gave us such a blessed time for our honeymoon. 
we had fellowship with some friends where the Lord fell in a very mighty way. We had worship all day. Remember that, honey? Oh my goodness, it was powerful. Uh, Brother Ramon can testify to the worship. Young, uh, uh, sweet lady got anointed as an evangelist. It was precious. It was power. But God did it. You seek, to do, you seek to get it for yourself, you lose it. I'll never forget, Leanne and I went for anniversary one time. We're like, let's go to Fondue. We went to Colorado Fondue. Oh my goodness, we, we shared with the waiter. It was wonderful. It was precious. It was anointed. Where should we go? Let's go to Colorado Fondue again because we had such a great time. It was the following anniversary. It was miserable. It was like empty. Like... The food wasn't all that good. Service sort of stunk. And the people behind us were talking about how they were all ladies and how they should uh, try to encourage the one lady. Uh, they took her out, uh, encourage her, encouraging her that she should divorce her husband. It was a terrible night. It was horrible. And on the drives, Leanne and I said, you know, we never asked the Lord. We repented. So the, we had a couple watch the kids while we were out. In the 20 minutes that they were, we were just talking and just, and they were leaving after watching the kids, we had church. Because we repented for doing it our own way. And we said, okay, Lord. And boom, he gave us worship. Seek to do the will of him who sent you. Deny your will. Put it on the altar. If you haven't done it, don't just do it one time and, and say, but I've given you my will. Ah, uh -uh, every day. Every day, every moment, every minute, every second. Give me your will. Lord, is it your will for me to breathe right now? And I'm not being facetious. I'm not being sarcastic. Is it? The spirit was so heavy. When I was going through the betrothal period with Esther, I was like, Lord, you are just so present. Am I going home? And he made it very clear, no, son, you're not. You're not going home. I asked him, is this going to be my last breath? He said, no, very clearly, no. Okay. Is it not right to ask for your next breath? That's doing the will of him who sent you. Lord, there's nothing going on. What do you want me to do? Pray. Lord, there's nothing going on. What do you want me to do? Go read a book. Lord, can I drink some water? Is it not that the children be like a little child? That's how you enter the kingdom of heaven. What's the kingdom of heaven? The abiding. Christ in you. You want Christ in you? Give up yourself. Just stop trying to hold on to it. And just submit and surrender. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. May we always do the will of him who sent us. We love you, Jesus. We bless you. We praise you. Lord, Whatever you want to do with this word, let it be for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.